Okay, welcome uh, fourth graders to another science test review. Today we're going to be talking about changes in ecosystems. And in this video test review, we're going to be covering three basic portions here. We're going to be talking about how ecosystems change. We're going to be talking about um, what happens when ecosystems change. And lastly, we're going to be talking about what humans can do to protect ecosystems. So, how can ecosystems change? Ecosystems can change in a couple different ways. They can either happen by natural disasters or in natural ways, or they can happen by humans uh, doing something to this ecosystem. For example, let's look at it here. Um, a forest fire would be one way in which a ecosystem can change. A fire can spread through this forest and can actually ruin some of the habitats and the homes of animals living there. For example, this um, California condor, it um, could actually become extinct and no longer exist because its home got it destroyed. If it doesn't completely go out of existence and become extinct, it could become endangered by killing off uh, many of its numbers so that very few exist. Okay, So if it gets completely wiped out, it becomes ex extinct. If there are very few of that species living anymore, then that particular species can become endangered, which means there are not very many of them alive. So you have fires that can um, change a ecosystem. You have a hurricane and a tornado that can wipe out uh, an entire forest. It could wipe out an entire pond or lake. It could wipe out an entire farm. Uh, you have tsunamis, which are huge waves that could wipe out an entire coastline and all the life that lives in the coral reef. Um, how do humans uh, change ecosystems? Well, pollution is a really big one. Uh, cars can give off smog. And if you look at this picture here, smog can actually be the cause of a rise in temperatures. What basically happens is the cars give off this smog and there's this ozone layer that's around the earth that protects the solar energy or actually it protects us from the solar energy so we do not get too much of it. Once that ozone becomes uh, worn out from the smog, the solar energy is able to get through that much more and it actually causes earth to be that much hotter. You see, you can see the cars here giving off the smog that wears out the ozone layer and the solar energy then is able to get more directly to planet Earth and so it warms it up faster. Uh, now let's talk about what happens when ecosystems change. Um, first of all, we should understand that ecosystems are constantly changing. Weather and climate is constantly changing an ecosystem, either by these huge natural disasters or if um, the overall temperature for that year gets really warm because of the ozone layer uh, starts to get worn out. Earth as an ecosystem is going to change because it is going to get a lot warmer. So we definitely need to keep in mind that ecosystems are constantly changing, either by the natural disasters or by humans. Now, fires can actually help out an ecosystem because the fires will get rid of maybe the overpopulation of animals or maybe there's too many trees, too much brush, so it can get overcrowded. What fires do is they basically clean everything out and another thing, uh, fires are good for the soil because the trees and the plants will get burnt and break up and all of that timber and wood and nutrients will get back into the soil. Also, 
flowers or trees and pine cones that are holding seeds will explode from the fire and all of those seeds will actually replant into the nice soil. So fires act as kind of a seed dispersal as well. Um, what happens when ecosystems change? We talked about um, birds or other type of animals can become extinct if they're completely wiped out. Like, or they can become endangered like the California condor, which means the uh, number of them becomes really small in existence. You can see the animals oftentimes have to adapt or make certain accommodations that they didn't have to before. For example, this bear comes up and because of maybe the warming of the planet, the temperatures around the earth are going to be a lot warmer. And so maybe droughts happen, lakes and stuff get dried up. So this bear who used to go, who made it a habit, Habit means you do it a lot, you do it every day, it's something you kind of normally do. It's your tradition, it's your system, it's how you do things. This bear made a habit of going to this lake every day, every day. but now because of the drought, the lake has been evaporated, so it can't come to get fish any, uh, anymore. So animals may have to move to a different area, that would be one accommodation is moving. Another accommodation an animal would have to do would be to eat less because uh, it can't get the same uh, of amount of food that it was getting before. Um, let's see, what other things that can happen? We talked about accommodations, uh, endangered, extinct. Oftentimes animals just, uh, they have a hard time surviving when changes in ecosystems happen. You can see the American condors just like, man, it was hard to survive when this change happened. Um, what can humans do to protect these ecosystems? A, a couple things. One, humans can make laws. For example, uh, there is a smog check law. We talked about this in class. People have to take their cars in to get a smog check. If, our, if the car gives off too much of this smoke or this smog, then they have to get their car repaired. So that's one way to limit the ozone layer from being worn out. Another thing humans can do is to limit uh, when a particular animal is allowed to be hunted. Now we talked about also before that um, living things depend upon one another Bears eat the fish, and the fish eat the plankton. If all the plankton were to get eaten by the fish, the fish wouldn't have anything to eat anymore, and so the fish would start to die. And if the fish died, the bears would start to die because they don't have any fish to eat anymore. If there's too many bears, they are going to eat all of the fish, and so there won't be any fish left. And if there's no fish, there's going to be too many plankton, if there's too many plankton, the plankton are going to die off because their food is going to get all eaten up. The bears are going to die because there's no more fish. And so everything kind of needs one another. And so hunting can be a good thing because it controls the amount of animals that are at each level. If there's too many bears, then hunters can actually go and um, bring the number of bears to a good level so they're not eating all the fish and that sort of thing. All that is to say is that humans can make uh, good hunting laws to protect the balance uh, of the number of species at each level. Um, I think we've pretty much covered um, a whole bunch of the concept. We've talked about being endangered. We've talked about extinction. We've talked about accommodation. We talked about all the natural disasters that can happen that can change an ecosystem. We talked about them being always changing. We talked about laws and we talked about habits and that sort of thing. So you are ready to go for this changes in ecosystem uh, test. If you have any questions, contact me on Edmodo or Facebook. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys in class.